Okay, welcome everyone to World Collage Day, Cut to the Chase Artist Talk. Um, my name is Stephen C. Wagner, and I'm one of the owners of Arc Gallery and Studios in San Francisco, and we are so happy to participate with World Collage Day today. We meet once a month for collage -arama. So we do collage workshops and people come and they bring their own supplies and we supply lots of materials. So everybody gets together for a couple hours and we visit with each other and we make collages and we share what each one is doing. So we have eight of the artists that will be participating in the artist talk today. So welcome to the Cut to the Chase World Collage Day Artist Talk. So this is a picture of some of the artists making collages during our collage Rama event. So we set up tables in a big circle in the main gallery, and we all work on our collages, and we share materials and share information and help each other out. So this is the exhibition that we've had this year featuring collages made by artists that have participated in the collage Rama event. And so this exhibition is in our project gallery. So each artist is going to talk about the two pieces of artwork that they have in the exhibition. They're going to talk about their process and what inspired them and how they came to be a collage artist. So their first artist that we're going to hear from <clears throat> is Diane Hoffman. So welcome, Diane. Go ahead and talk about your collage process. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, everybody. My name is Diane Hoffman, and I am coming to you from my studio at Arc Studios and Gallery here in San Francisco. And this is the building where Collage Rama takes place um, out in our main gallery. And I'm fortunate to have played co-host to this wonderful group of artists uh, for the last nine years or so. I have been making collage since 2005, and uh, they have definitely developed and changed over the years. Um, I primarily uh, work in figurative, surreal, dreamlike landscapes using magazine clippings, um, but those eventually morphed into becoming assemblage works because uh, of my use of found objects and the objects took over and I stopped calling them collage and they're definitely more assemblage and that's what I'm widely known for. Um, I'm fortunate that uh, I have a following of supporters that are familiar with my work and on a weekly basis, I am surprised with gifts, uh, you know, boxes and bags full of random art making materials, um, objects and scraps and um, just, just about anything that people find that they think um, I might find interesting and want to use in my work. Um, one bag that I received at the end of last year uh, contained random scraps of book spines and uh, book covers and torn cardboard remnants that had a, just a little bit of writing on them. Um, playing cards and postage stamps and lots of miscellaneous uh, bits of fabric and material. And I found them really um, inspiring. Um, this bag of goodies lent directly to the collages that I made in this series. This one in particular is called uh, Easy Running Wonder. Oh, I'm sorry, not this one. This one <laughs> is called One Dollar Poem. And um, I took that from some of the um, random uh, wording that is found in the papers that I use. Um, there's one that's like a, a scrap from a, a Mexican dollar that says uh, uno dinero. And then right next to it is a book spine of poems. So that's why it's called $1 Poem. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephen, you can go to the next page. And this one is the one that's called uh, Easy Running Wonder. And I took that directly from that uh, ruler that's off to the left side. Um, the faded and muted jewel tones in um, the scraps um, that were in this uh, wonderful bag of goodies donated to me uh, really inspired me to attempt a more abstract aesthetic away from my usual surreal dreamlike landscapes that I usually make with magazine clippings. Um, Abstract art is really a challenge for me, something I've wanted to attempt for many years, but um, it doesn't come naturally for me. Um, I am always uh, 
feel compelled to convey a story or a hidden message or a personal reference in my work. Um, so this really forced me to set that down and just um, rely on these puzzle pieces to allow them to fall or fit in this case where they may. And it was a practice in letting go and accepting the work for its simplicity. Um, so I plan to make another dozen or so of these pieces and we'll exhibit them as a whole, a, a, a large series um, during our SF Open Studios event in November, which will be November 10th, 11th and 12th here at ARC. And I hope that those in the Bay Area can join us. Okay, Diane, thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us. Um, so we have a few questions uh, in the chat room. Um, one person is asking, where did you learn collage? <laughs> well, I am a, I learn from trial and error. <laughs> I just, I've always been a creative person and um, collage was the one thing that uh, I felt like I could do without any training. Um, I just had some magazines in the corner and a glue stick and I just sort of had at it. And for a long time, it was just something I did uh, to pass the time, keep my hands busy. And then they started to get kind of good. So <laughs> I took it a little more seriously, but I learned just from my exposure to other artists and art and my just my, my imagination. Okay, and how do you select which pieces go together <clears throat> in one piece of work? Well, in this case, it was sort of uh, where they fit and how the, you know, I wanted a variety of colors um, and I wanted to see just how the, um, the different bits sort of intuitively, I like to say that they speak to each other for me, art making is a very intuitive process and um, I don't like to overthink it too much. I just kind of, I feel like all of the bits and pieces where they be objects or scraps of fabric or what have you, that they, they speak to me <laughs> and I just let it, you know, intuitively um, take over and uh, set them down. And when I stand back and it, there's like a magic click and I like, and it's just, it's a, it's a yes for me. And that's, that's how I go with it. Okay, and one other question. Do you make your living off your art? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> um, yeah, not entirely, no. I live in San Francisco, probably the most expensive city in all of the country. Um, and uh, so to make it off of um, this sort of art that's very non-commercial uh, would be asking a lot. So no, it subsidizes my life for sure. It allows me to take a trip here and there, maybe buy a new pair of boots and pay for my art studio. But the other things like food and rent of my apartment, I have to find other means to pay those things. <laughs> okay, Diane, thank you so much for participating in the exhibition and the artist talk uh, today. Thank you. And now um, I'm gonna talk about the two pieces that I have in the exhibition. So um, I'm Stephen C. Wagner and I've been making art since I was six years old. My mother was a professional artist and owned a gallery. And I um, have a BFA and I basically was doing painting, but I always was interested in collage. So I would collect papers you know, all the time that I would find or buy. And I put them in a box that I kept under my bed. <laughs> and I knew someday I would be making collages. And, I, uh, and so unfortunately I broke five ribs and I was home for three months for medical leave uh, recuperating. So I had friends bring my box of papers and I started making collages on my lap while I was um, recuperating and I haven't stopped making collages since. So um, this piece here that's in the exhibition is titled Everything, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, and so I'm really um, attracted to basic shapes like squares and circles. So most of my artwork is square. And a lot of times I put uh, circle elements in this. And so in finding elements that were circles, clocks and clock faces, is they're all circles. And so they seem to be an obvious thing. So um, I love making things that are juxtaposing colors, uh, darks against lights and contrasts and things like that. So this piece is 
um, making a statement about time. And there's so many different times and the eyes of people are looking into, looking into the future, looking into the time, looking into the past. Uh, so combining the, fate, the clock faces and the eyes um, and all these different circles. And this is a three-dimensional collage. So each layer has space between it. So there's three different layers. So the background are the um, eight large circles. And then the, the three uh, other large circles are a next layer. And then the smaller circles float above that. Um, and so that this, the title was inspired by the movie that won the Academy Award for Best Film. And then this piece is titled uh, Not Forgotten. So uh, it's from the, um, you know, saying gone but not forgotten. And so um, this is on a square format. So you saw the previous one there where I did circles. So this is uh, an example of my square format. And there's two images, and these are people, uh, silhouettes of people, and these are people wearing wearing hats and clothing from the 30s and 40s. So these are people from the past, and each person is standing within a frame, and the frame is from a vintage photo album. And so this is like the people in a photo album that are no longer here. So you know, as time goes by, our memories are not as clear. They become kind of faded and we don't remember people um, as clearly. And so this is kind of a representation of these are people that are no longer with us. They're gone, but not forgotten. And then I use a lot of elements of rulers and measurement in my work as well. And so this also is this passing of time, the passing of numbers, the marching of numbers, the measurement of things, the measurement of time. Okay, so um, are there any um, questions uh, about my work before we um, go on? So I am addicted to hoarding <laughs> mm -hmm. um, papers and stuff. So I get, um, I find thrift shops and resale stores or even on the sidewalk in the street, I find things and I'm always collecting. And I have a cabinet in my studio that's full of books and papers and things like that. So the backing of this piece is actually a 78 LP record album. So you can see the jagged, soiled, torn edges, and that's from a vintage record jacket. The black is the paper that's wrapping around from the front, wrapping around the back, and then that um, brown color is the backing. So this is the inside of a record jacket. And so I have a whole series that I've done using the 12 inch by 12 inch uh, 78 LP record jacket. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the pieces that I have in the exhibition. The next artist that we're going to hear from is Elizabeth Addison. So welcome, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you for participating in the exhibition and tell us a little bit about yourself and your process of your work and the pieces in the show. Thank you, Stephen, and happy World Collage Day. My name is Elizabeth Addison. I'm a Berkeley-based visual artist, curator, and educator. I've always included collage and found imagery elements in my printmaking and installation but I took the deep dive in January 2018 when I committed to give new life um, to old, <laughs> rejected, failed, or incomplete prints that I would have otherwise trashed in massive cleanup. Um, the cleanup was prompted by the death of my mother and a, and a dear mentor and having to clean up um, their apartments and make sense of all their belongings. And I felt like, oh my God, I can't do this to my kids. Um, but it ended up turning into a daily practice project that continued through the pandemic. And I would say the magic moment occurred uh, when I went <clears throat> dimensional and began to engineer and create dimensional collages. So I'll speak briefly now about the two works um, from my Smith River series, Homecoming and Internalizing that were including, included in the Cut to the Chase exhibit curated by Stephen. Um, first of all, it's important to mention that the Smith River 
California's last wild river has been a personal touch tone, touchstone, excuse me. Each summer, her emerald waters welcome my family during our annual visit. It's a real homecoming and my Smith River series honor her. Um, these works are created with original photography of and digital imagery inspired by the Smith. I print my imagery on 100% luscious cotton rag paper at Kala Art Institute. I then cut, paint, and construct these dimensional works, adding pieces of my own monoprints, art papers, paint, beads, thread, and whatever the imagery calls for. It really speaks to me. Homecoming, shown here, and internalizing, um, were <laughs> the other green one is homecoming, were created this year um, in Collage Rama's monthly sessions. They are meditations upon cherished qualities of this untamed river. For homecoming, can we go back to the former? Thank you. I focused on her welcoming emerald depths and clarity. The water imagery is inspired from my own photography of a deep, still portion of the Smith South Fork. The print is slightly raised from the substrate and I painted its underside and the substrates varying shades of red. Um, then I cut ovals, uh, leaving the center intact so that I could open them on the sides. Um, and then I opened them in a progression from almost closed to fully extended to expose what's underneath. Um, for the next, for internalizing, here I mused on the otherworldly way light plays upon the water surface at dawn. The disc is floated and its underside is painted cobalt. Um, and then the underside reflects upon the substrate or its base, creating a really beautiful soft blue halo. I inserted translucent vellum discs in a radial pattern that play with light and shadow throughout the day. This piece is mounted and placed in a floater frame and unglazed. Um, thank you very much for including me in the artist talk today. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you so much for um, sharing that with us, your inspiration for these pieces and the processes. So in these two pieces, you have the oval cuts and then you show the um, straight line cuts. So do you have a use a variety of cutting um, shapes in the series? Yes, and that was something I sort of figured out over time. My background is in advertising and um, I was a creative director and graphic designer for many years and I still have all those tools. Yes, I'm a hoarder. What do they say about hoarders, artists, teachers, and the mentally ill? But anyway, <laughs> I started using some of these old tools to create patterns and shapes um, for where I would cut. And I just use um, an X-Acto for the most part and cut very carefully. Okay. And why do you choose the circle format for these pieces? Well, that is a really good question. Um, <laughs> I, I would say that these are intentionally mandala-like to, um, to express and embody um, the Smith's spiritual force and that of all wild waters. Um, I, I feel that um, it's, it's really important to beguile with beauty into the caretaking of our fresh waters and it, and for me, it's always a spiritual experience. Okay, and so these are three-dimensional also. So um, how do you frame these? That's a good question also. I'm experimenting with framing at this point. Um, until recently, I framed everything in um, a shadow box. And lately, I have been mounting these works and placing them in floater frames and leaving them unglazed. And it's really effective. You get to see it. I mean, you can also use museum glass or optium, that uh, museum quality um, acrylic um, or plexi, but it's so expensive. And, and I think um, that people really enjoy the immediacy of, of being with these pieces without any barriers. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing so much insight into your process and the meaning behind the pieces. And we're glad that you were able to join us for the artist talk today.
My pleasure. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So the next artist we're going to hear from is Priscilla Otani. So Priscilla is also one of the owners of ARC. She also has a studio at ARC as well. And so Priscilla, uh, welcome. And please talk about um, how you came to collage and the pieces that are included in the exhibition. So Priscilla, please uh, unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for your invitation. Um, I've been collaging for oh, great many years, and I started out by collaging um, ephemera that I collected on my trips. I used to travel a great deal when I was working, and every country or city or state that I went to, I ended up collecting scraps of interesting information, whether it be just colorful wrapping paper or business cards or you know, pamphlets, whatever, and things that have fallen on the ground, trash, um, whatever um, I took a fancy to. And initially I would take them home with the intention of making a collage at home, but I realized that I never had the time once I got home. So then I got into the discipline of creating travel books where I collaged every piece of paper I collected. And my rule was that any paper I had left over I had to leave behind. And through that, it sort of developed the discipline of creating collages in general and looking at designing images that are put together. Um, for this particular um, exhibition, I created um, little storylines around the white fox or kitsune. Um, this is a, a character that appears quite frequently in Japanese cultural um, historical culture, and it's both um, a national emblem as well as a folklore. I'm not going to get into the kitsune lore here, but I've used scraps of paper that I had left over for a much larger project that I do with mixed media painting. Um, and this one is called Hanami. Um, the next one, please. And this one is called The Hunt. And again, I used uh, scraps of paper that were left over from other works. Um, as you can see, there's Japanese writing on the right. That is not my handwriting. Um, but one of the things I do is when I go home to Japan, I do go to um, temple sales and um, use book sales. And invariably, there will be a stack of what we call copy books where people practice calligraphy that people don't want anymore. You could buy stacks of those books for practically nothing. I mean, if you think everything in Japan is expensive, you're wrong. You can still find really cheap things that are absolutely delightful. So I, I bring a bunch of those home and use them for my, uh, for my collages quite frequently. Um, as you can see, I use Japanese papers here, but I'm not limited to that. I use whatever paper I find. So again, if I find advertisements, if I find a call for Trumpian get-togethers, um, any of those things I find intriguing and interesting will be incorporated into a collage or two. So um, that's my story. Okay, Priscilla, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, storyline or the narrative of the white fox in the Japanese culture? Sure. There's two um, things to say about the fox. One thing is it's a national symbol. It is It represents uh, fecundity and rice. And oftentimes you will see like a, a fox shrine in Japan. They're all over. And um, you see a fox carrying a sheaf of rice in their mouths. And so the, the whiteness of the fox and the whiteness of the rice um, are tied together. Um, they're considered divine beings. Um, on the folklore side, they are considered um, rather, uh, what would I say, dangerous. Um, they usually um, become women or they be transform themselves into women and they exact revenge on men who have harmed other women. So it's got a malevolent um, aspect to it. Um, I've always loved both types of um, symbolisms in the fox, both the folklore type and also the national symbolism. And I've always told myself that I would one day devote an entire year to doing fo white fox work. And it just happens to be this year, I'm doing paintings, I'm doing collages, I'm doing drawings, every media I could think of, and they're all about the fox. Okay, and the fox images in these two pieces, are these painted on? They're actually both. 
they're actually cut out and then I put a little bit of color. I put a little bit of paint on them. Yes. Okay, great. So Priscilla, thank you so much. So uh, we appreciate you joining us today and sharing uh, so much information about the pieces that are in the exhibition. So thanks for participating. Okay, so the next artist we're going to hear from is Glenn Bachman. So Glenn, go ahead and unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Tell us uh, a little bit about how you came to collage work and your inspiration for the two pieces in the exhibition. Yes, thank you for inviting me to the collage day, World Collage Day. Uh, so I started doing collages uh, kind of late teens. Uh, started started doing like party flyers, you know, like for like an event or you know like a band playing or something. You know, it was influenced a lot by punk aesthetic at the time, and then it evolved. I, I got involved with an underground magazine called Processed World here in San Francisco. And so I did a lot of graphics and um, as well as like illustrating uh, mine and other people's stories. So uh, this this collage is called Willie Maze and that maze is spelled M-A-I-Z-E like the, the other word for corn. And, and really it's just, it's kind of inspired by a word play, you know, like, um, I grew up loving baseball, love Willie Mays. Uh, I, I was just just kind of looking for uh, imagery that would kind of support the, the play on words, basically. And the background image is I took a photo I took at the uh, at Pier Forty Five at the Musée Mécanique of like one of the old mechanical baseball games. Uh, yeah. And uh, this one uh, is called Cut to the Chase, which was inspired by the uh, this year's theme. And uh, often the way I work is like, I'll just, I'll have like two or three images that will start to speak to each other. And in this case, it was the, um, you know, the cowboys riding off or, you know, from the sunset, but, you know, there's uh, the, oil wigs and then you know just the the fire and and it, it just seemed like a lot of chase action was going on like there's um you know the dog chasing the car i, I kind of like that whole archetype archetype of like the dog chasing the car and what if it catches the car uh in among the oil rigs i snuck in a little eiffel tower from paris there in the background and um, yeah, just more kind of chasing imagery. Um, you know, so a lot of it was subconscious kind of choice of, um, you know, just images that, that seem to speak to each other, like the, the other people in cowboy hats. Um, yeah. Hey, Glenn, so thank you for sharing that about the pieces in the exhibition. So we have a question about this piece. Could uh, Somebody's asking if you could give us a little bit of an explanation of the frame around the piece. Oh. Uh, like other artists who've mm -hmm. already presented, I just, I find things that are um, just interesting and curious to me. And a lot of times uh, they're like 3D pieces too. So I just, I don't remember where I found this particular thing or even what it was meant for but i thought this would be a good frame someday for something and it was just in my closet so i um i used it for this piece i thought it would uh work well with this particular piece okay and people have commented how much they enjoy your uh sense of humor and your whimsy in your pieces so do you also do pieces that are more serious or abstract or are all your pieces uh, fun and whimsical? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I'd say I lean towards the the more fun side. You know, I mean, I do some that are more serious, but I think um, I think what inspires me is just bringing a little bit of like light and joy to um, you know, just to the moment, to to people's experience and to my own experience, really. And do you use mainly magazines for your materials in the collages? 
magazines and uh, like I'll use some of my own photos like that, that one in the, the background. Um, you know, sometimes like uh, stuff that comes in the mail, like for um, political campaigns, I'll, I'll use that, that kind of stuff too. But yeah, mainly magazines and sometimes I'll like get by old magazines or find old magazines. Like this so one here is inspired a lot by like kind of 1950s, 60s images. And where do you generally show your artwork? Um, I show a lot at City Art Gallery, which um, I'm showing currently this month. It's on Valencia Street in San Francisco between 19th and 20th. And as soon as um, uh, I have to leave shortly to go work a shift there, but uh, I also uh, show, you know, just other other places that um, there's a theme or whatever that my work uh, fits in with. Okay, Glenn, thank you so much for participating in the Collage Rama workshops at ARC. We always enjoy having you as part of the the fun times that we have there, and we appreciate you sharing so much about your artwork during the artist talk today for World Collage Day. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Okay, so the next artist we have is Susan Birnbaum. Um, so is Susan uh, joining? Has Susan joined us in Zoom? Susan, if you're here, please go ahead and turn on your audio and talk about your work in the exhibition. Okay, so we didn't see Susan join us at the beginning. So she has two pieces in the exhibition, um, which are very fun and whimsical. Um, the, and so these are the two pieces. So unfortunately, she's not able to join us today. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next artist. So the next artist is Maureen Layton. So Maureen, go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and your collage work and the two pieces that are included in the exhibition. Okay, well, hi, I'm Maureen Layton and um, I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, my collage practice probably started when I was a kid, but I'm a very lazy person, so it took a pandemic to get it started. Uh, one of my daughters moved in with me um, during the pandemic, and we would watch Buffy reruns, and I would collage, and she would knit. <laughs> so, so that's how it started. Um, a lot of my pieces, or most of my pieces, come from materials that I find in the street. In San Francisco, there's many free libraries. So the background of this is a wonderful classical drawing book that someone got rid of. Uh, I like picking up um, comic books and I like pieces of things like the cape or what looks like a red cape is a piece of, of something. Um, so like Diane and like everyone, um, I feel like I'm pretty intuitive um, I sort of like the less is more um, about things. Um, I'm obviously into the surreal, so it's it's just kind of fun. Um, I that's pretty much what I can say. So this particular piece, and then this has, and yeah, and so this one also uh, comes from a big photograph that I found at Scrap. The rest of it is magazine pieces. Um, uh, I can't explain exactly, but I really enjoy making collage. Uh, I work in both analog and digital. And what's fun about digital is that sometimes I'll take a picture of an analog collage and take it further into the digital world, which is like being in a candy store because you can pick up any image. That's all I can really say at this point. Hey, <laughs> so. Marie, thank you so much for sharing that with us. So I noticed that in <clears throat> both your collages that you have um, human figures so do you include people in all your collage work uh you know i like i like a lot of characters and i think uh i like creating the beginning or the middle of a story or maybe the end of a story so it's sort of like someone could look at it and wonder what that person is doing yeah so. okay and this one is uh, mainly black and white and the first one we looked at is fairly monochromatic with that red accent. So how do you choose your colors and are most of your pieces um, understated? 
Uh, honestly, it's, it's influenced by, from what I find. So sometimes I'll be posting things on the Instagram and I realize everything is monochromatic <laughs> and then I'll switch it up. But, uh, again, I think it comes to simplicity and, um, black and white is interesting because of contrast and shadows. Yeah. This one I really like. It's very mysterious to me. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So a lot of your work is intuitive then. Yeah, and uh, although it's interesting to hear what, um, I also came from an ad agency and uh, more on the uh, uh, production side, I mean, working in printing. Um, so it's a similar background to what Elizabeth's talking about. Um, and the travel thing is interesting. So it, it's very been very interesting to hear everyone talk about their origins. Okay. And, and so do you create a little story in your head when you're making these and selecting the elements? I think the story comes, yes, as I'm doing it, I would like to be a little more aware of what I'm doing, but it's, it's pretty automatic. I'm hoping in the future to make bigger pieces. And my big dream is to someday um, make giant collages and hire someone to stick them up on ladders because I'm almost 70 and I really don't want to fall off the ladder. Okay. So, so, Marie, be so thank you so much for joining us today and sharing so much uh, about your work. And we appreciate you participating in the Collage of Warma workshops. I love meeting you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and so the last artist um, for uh, our World Collage Day celebration is Mary Kekskometi. And Mary, if you want to um, unmute yourself and talk about the piece that you have included in the exhibition, how you claim to collage work and how, uh, your inspiration. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, I'm Mary Kekskometi. And in preparing for my three minute talk, I realized I've probably been doing working with collage since I was a little kid. Um, but in more recent years, I started um, working with collage again in the early 2000s um, with other mediums too, encaustic paints, pen and ink, and watercolor. And it started as a way to deal with my anxieties on long and delayed airplane flights. Easy in the fact that you don't need much in the way of supplies and the airline provides the magazines. So, um, a little bit about my process. I love the hunt for art treasure to spark my imagination and to get the creative juices flowing. I'm probably a bit of a hoarder, um, which I don't know, I just love having all of my collections around me and like digging through and seeing what's gonna go where and how this fits in. Um, so first, I mine for images, special papers, copy, photos, anything that has potential. While I'm searching, I'm thinking about stories or messages I want to convey. Um, I like to play with the, the layout, with what goes where. And my constant questions during my process are, what comes next and does this belong here? Working this way becomes meditative and usually blissful or can turn frustrating and I need to step back and let it be and then come back to the piece. Um, I wanna thank Maureen for bringing me to ARC Studios to join in um, collage night. It's been so wonderful to meet everybody there and thank you for welcoming me in and um, allowing me to take part in Cut to the Chase. This is really my first piece that I've ever exhibited. So it's very exciting. That is very exciting. We're it so, is very I'm exciting. I'm so thrilled that this is your first piece to exhibit. I know, I'm just thrilled to be here. And I wanna appreciate all of you, all of the artists that are, and including me in this. Okay. Um, and a little bit about my piece is it's entitled The Night My Heart Left for Parts Unknown. This piece deals with death and grief and what happens to the heart in the process. I've been exploring the ideas of lighthouses as symbols of love, hope, and light. My heart in this lighthouse, which becomes a rocket ship, 
is blasting off for a destination unknown. No land in sight, only outer space. There are other hearts out there on similar voyages. My heart is not alone. The unknown is scary, but the skyscape is full of beauty and love. So that's um, that was my inspiration for this piece on really dealing with issues of death and grief. Okay, Mary, thank you for um, explaining the inspiration behind this piece. So the background has a really interesting texture. Could you uh, describe what the background is and what the texture is in that? It, it, it's a piece of art, printed art paper that is consisted with, consistent with that bit of um, like rounded design. And then to grade eight, you know, night, nighttime, I used um, watercolor markers to create the night sky and then the clouds and then the sea. So it's one piece of paper for the background. Okay, thank you for explaining that to us. Um, and what are the um, elements that you use that are uh, that the hearts are suspended by in the backs back? Those those were a unique find. They were laser cut snowflakes, paper snowflakes, and I cut them up into smaller pieces, using them for the hangers for the hearts, and then for the stars in the background. And then the um, the sea cliff and the sea and the um, the uh, lighthouse was from a photograph that I printed out at various sizes and then put back together. And then the little streaks out from the lighthouse are actual heartbeats from a heart readout machine. Okay, Mary, well, thank you so much for joining us with Collage Rama and participating in the Artist Talk today. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Okay, <laughs> so um, one thing that we do each year with the Collage Rama workshop is we have a project that all the artists work on. And so this year, uh, the project has been the Heartbeat. And so we had elements of hearts and heartbeat graphs and we provided six by six plaques and all the artists were invited to create um, multiple collages using incorporating these elements. So all the pieces had to have at least one element uh, that we provided. So there was a variety of shapes of hearts and there was a variety of the heartbeat graph. And so these are a few of the pieces that were included um, and made during the collage rama workshops and then for the exhibition they were hung and installed as a grid so this is a photograph of the actual installation of all the heartbeat project pieces uh, that were done during the collage rama so uh, this is a really fun project so each year we do a project like this so i want to thank all the artists um, that participated in the artist talk today uh, and sharing so much uh, about their inspiration and their process. And thank you to everybody all over the world who joined us to celebrate World Collage Day. Um, and we are so proud of our artists at Art Gallery and Studios. So thank you for joining us, everyone.